All right, hello, welcome back. Today we are going to be painting Doctor Strange from Marvel Crisis Protocol. Um, he's a little bit of a strange model. You can see like these little cuts in his cape. I think those are for him to connect to the spell effect that we're also gonna be painting. Um, but we're gonna be doing some airbrushing for like his main clothes and stuff today. So uh, I already have my airbrush loaded up. We're gonna start off with a coat of Prussian blue from Vallejo um, to get his main uh, cloak painted. The cape is all red, but, and I was thinking about doing it separate, but I think we'll be fine. Um, no promises though, like always. So just try to get as good a coverage as you can. You can try to avoid the other areas if you want, if you can. I don't like the face because this face is not blue. Okay. So we've got, he's a smurf now. Uh, I think we've got all of his clothes covered. There's some spots back here. This thing just nukes fucking paint out. Um, Cause I changed the head to the bigger head on it. Um, which probably isn't the smartest thing. Um, so now that he's a smurf, we are going to do the same thing we did last week with the Punisher and do like a overcoat with a much lighter blue to get some different shades in there. So we're gonna get, we can leave, we don't have to clean our thing out because it's still blue. Um, so we're gonna get Ultramarine, we're gonna go with Ultramarine from there. Put just a little bit in our cup here, along with our thinner. Get it nice and nice and runny. This is like a really different blue, so that's gonna contrast really good, I think, with this guy. So you can see spray through that old stuff. Okay, let's grab. Doctor Strange. And we're going to do the whole shoot at it from a high angle um, and try not to get other stuff. It's really kind of hard with the a long uh, toothpick thingy on here. Maybe not. So we have some variation in there now um, that I think will come out pretty good when we go to the next couple phases on him. Uh, let's shoot all this out. And really quickly put some thinner in here. Not thinner, the cleaner. Shoot some cleaner through this. You know, one day they'll have a better way of cleaning airbrushes than what they have because it is not great. And it's like, I think it's like one of those things too where, you know, like the people that use it are like elite and they're like, well, why would we make it easier for new people to use the airbrush? Like, you know, like how some things that, some things that people do <clears throat> that are unnecessarily hard just for the sake that it was hard when they were learning. Um, so now we're going to paint the spell effect 
Uh, so we have this game air, orange fire, and we don't have to thin this paint because it's already for airbrushes. So that is <coughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not dying. My windows are wide open. It just doesn't like to come out very well. Right, so let's get this guy. Make sure orange starts coming through. Okay. So here is the spell effect for him, and he glues like in here, and it's really confusing. So we might not get him on his his base. We're gonna do like a kind of ombre for this guy, and just paint some of it. Just make sure we get all the angles here. Okay. Now we have a yellow from the same line of Game Air paint. And we're going to shoot the yellow through to give us some variation there, some gold yellow. Yeah, let's shoot this until yellow is coming through. We're going to try to just hit the, the main tops of this thing here. Try to have it so there's like a yellow to, to green, I mean to orange transition kind of in there. Just kind of hit like the, the edges. Back doesn't matter as much because Doctor Strange is going to be glued in there. Glued in there allegedly. Um, but that takes care of the spell effect so that's going to be nice that that's done because it's just like one, two colors. I think it's like his sling ring type of ability. Um, kind of like he's just like walking through the portal. Let's clean out the airbrush. Let's shoot all this out. I'm not even sure that I'm doing this right. I'm just doing it. Um, I can pretty much assure you that I'm not doing it correctly. But... <coughs> Worst case scenario, take the airbrush apart and clean it that way. But it's been working. <coughs> <coughs> Stuff's not toxic, but it sure doesn't smell great. And it gets caught in your your throat. Um, it irritates it a little bit, so you should maybe wear a mask, but. I, I don't. Okay. So let's get this kind of over here so I have like a reference. Okay. So now we can get our Smurf. Start working on him. Didn't know what that was. I was like, what is that? Um, so let's work on the blue some more. Um, Get like the other parts kind of done. I also have to paint some yellow on this guy, and that's not gonna be fun because that's never fun. Um, first, actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this matte white and I'm gonna paint his face because we're gonna use that same uh, contrast paint that we used on the Punisher to get his skin tone. So let's just Pour some of that out. And oh, there's too much water on this brush. Yeah, okay. I'm 
We can actually paint some of his hair because he does have white in his hair. And we can actually hit the cape more too because that is a red. So just make sure you're getting good coverage. Okay, so that's gonna be okay. Now we're gonna take our deep sky blue and paint the emblem on his chest. Be cool to. I kind of want to buy another one of these and of the, the Punisher, and then mix put this cape on the Punisher, um, and then paint his cape all magical. I mean the gun all magical pink, because uh, there's a cool issue where Doctor Strange kind of possesses the Punisher, and it is so cool. Like that's the fun thing about like the Punisher is that he has like a different a bunch of different versions of the Punisher. There's like Spider-Man Punisher. Um, there's like a there's a War Machine Punisher. That's freaking dope. Right, cool, we got his symbol painted. It's not too bad. the next biggest part on here is going to be well, let's get uh, let me see yeah let's try to do the yellow on him so let me just pin him up there while I clean that um, we can go with we have a couple different yellows I think this one has been covering really good but it's not like yellow um, I do have this stuff sun yellow which is kind of close to the yellow that we have on him but it does not cover the greatest so let's give it a shot um, and see what happens um, or not if this is all dried up um, <laughs> and that kind of clears me of having to use it let me pop the cap here This is like probably one of my older paints. Because mm -hmm. I don't like painting yellow, I don't usually have a whole lot of it on hand. So we're gonna forego that and we will go we could technically paint. The, oh god, am I that sweaty already? We could paint this gold yellow on from the airbrush stuff, so we'll try that. See how that works. If it doesn't work, we can always go to the moon dust stuff. Um, so we'll take the, the airbrush gold yellow and try to paint it on him and see how that goes. Um, his gloves and his belt are yellow, as well as the accents on the 
Ooh, it's very watery. <laughs> that is scary. <laughs> Can, I can see that going bad. So we're gonna go with moon dust, and then we can maybe wash with the gold yellow colors to make it um, pop out a little bit more. I'm just worried that that's gonna flow a lot and just ruin our airbrush work that we did. So. I think it's gonna work good as a wash now that I'm seeing them like kind of going over the stuff that I already put down. And just be careful around the blue. You don't want to mess up the work that we did. because we haven't painted it yet. Try to pull it out of the model before you pull it away towards yourself um, so you avoid hitting things that you don't want to. We don't have to go in here to get the back of this, but we'll try. <laughs> I think because this is a blue color that yellow paint didn't work as great that um, the airbrush paint, but it would have worked fine if we had not crazily over sprayed everything. But I don't know how you're gonna avoid it <laughs> on some of this stuff. Okay, so there's this. Let's get his gloves.
trying to be careful again around the the chest and stuff that we've painted already. video like it's not the most stable when he's not on a base but because of how he hooks to that spell effect thing I can't attach him beforehand to the base and undo it later I mean I could maybe drill a hole in his foot um, and do it that way because um, he goes on a pretty big base he goes on a much bigger base than the Punisher is on Get this other hand. It's also weird like how they part these models out sometimes. Like the Punisher was pretty easy to put together. You guys saw pretty much all the pieces it was. Um, except like this hand that I'm painting right now was already attached to the arm that I'm painting it on. Um, but the other hand was not attached to the arm that it was that it's uh, painted on. Like so it was like a that's a weird choice. Like some of their like molds are a little confusing to me on like how they made that decision on like what to separate from the things and whatnot like the Hulk model has the the worst ones I, I think the most offensive um, but I don't know fancy flight just because I mean this isn't really fancy flight it's published by them but you just need to figure out their whole process because uh, like I complained about the ATRT, the, the instructions there weren't great. Uh, this was like the first one I, was, I ever put together for Marvel that had the parts numbered and the instructions numbered. Um, it's like when, the, like when the game first came out, the how to put it together, the instructions don't tell you what part numbers to use. And, and uh, but all the sprues are numbered so it says like i'm like why what they ended up putting a, a a new thing online but i was building who was i building i think thor i think thor didn't have the numbers on his on the um instructions either i was like what why are they are they trying to save money on ink or something like what's the deal was it an accident Okay, there's his little, his little fingers. His little fingies are all painted. Yes. Clean up around the, the cuff here. <coughs> ah, all right. So now we can shift to the the cloak um, I'm going to be painting that red of course and it has a yellow um, trim to it so we'll try not to get the red on the, <laughs> the parts but so we're going to use vermilion it's a nice little it's a really bright red we're going for the color that's are the colors that are on the box art um, as best as we can and I'm using it as reference to kind of paint doesn't look like his, the collar on the thing has any yellow, so that's interesting too. Painting that mustache is gonna be weird though. We'll see if we get that, <laughs> see if we get that done. So we got our vermilion, let's shake that up. We're gonna switch to a little bit bigger brush for the most part of this, but when we start getting around like the other details, like the head and stuff, we'll switch back to a smaller brush just because I feel safer. Even though I have to take like more brush strokes, I feel safer knowing that I'm not gonna ruin the work that I did. Um, 
but it is okay if you do. I mean, if you do, then you just have to start out, like do it again. It's not the end of the world. It's just paint. It can it can all be redone. I think this blue might work as a little bit of a shadow for us too when we're we're gonna have to do multiple coats of this red for sure. So you can see how streaky it is. Just try to keep the streaks all going in the same direction. Um, if you can, take just like full brush strokes. We're just brushing straight down toward the bottom. Occasionally I'm going sideways because I have to grab the undercuts here. It's fall right now, allegedly, but it's hot today. It was like 90 degrees today. It's like, what the hell, man? You know, global, global weirding is what we call it. While that's drying, we'll go to the other side. Um, this time we gotta be careful because you don't want to, because we're close to this blue, so just be careful. Try not to splash it because um, you definitely can like flick it onto the paint and damage your paint job, and you don't want to do that. So we'll go up as far as we feel comfortable going. We'll get the rest with a different brush. You don't have to paint the edge because that will be yellow. And just rotate the model around as you, as you go through. close to me for this part and we'll see what we can do with the brush that we have. Just pulling, I'm just looking at him every once in a while like, did I get in there? So far so good. have to go all the way up because again you're not gonna see it I'm gonna take the brush like this I definitely hit the belt with it on the other side just a little bit it's okay I'm just gonna lead us into this part up here, which we can definitely get with this. Same thing on. Okay. 
and we can get the underside of the collar. Like I said earlier, I don't know if we're going to be able to get him on his base for the end of this video because it is a lot more involved than just popping him on there. Um, I'm going to have to figure that out and wrestle with that because the constructions are not great. They're not really what you would expect from a miniature game. Okay, let's switch to the small brush for the top of the collar here. Make sure you're getting those, those edges and This face is more of a gray right now than a white, um, but I think paint will still look fine once we get it on there, the contrast paint. down to get behind his head. That's always a fun part to try to get. <laughs> I think we did that pretty good. So now we're gonna go through the rest of the red again. We're gonna go and do a second coat. Um, try to get it, brighten it up a lot more than it is. Um, so. You can see the second coat is really brightening it up a lot more. I'm trying to do short strokes on this one um, just to keep a lot of the, the brighter color and not thinning it out so much across the whole surface of the cape. And we can leave some of those dark spots in there because that's going to help us shade it more especially since like I don't have a red wash um, so that's gonna it's gonna help us we can use all the help we can get Enjoy painting these Marvel models. Uh, they're really fun because it's just the scale is different, and you know I get to paint the Marvel characters that I grew up like reading and stuff in the comic books and all that. I 
I, don't, I have most of my favorite characters now. Still need Nova. Still need them to make a Nova. <laughs> so that's good. That's a that's a good coverage of the red, I think. So let's just stick him in there. Now we're gonna go back to that yellow that we were using earlier and get the the call the trim and stuff on this. So let's start the most critical part here. All right, get the sides first here. That's okay if we hit the belt because it's the same color. Gonna be a little shaky, but you can see the line and just try your best to stay in it. So just don't put too much pressure on your brush so you don't, so you're just kind of gliding over the top of the surface here. This is a pretty big corner piece here. Kind of flares out here. Remember to breathe. Don't hold your breath. I know it's tempting. God, I wish this was on a base. Something I can get more purchase on than just like a couple fingers. <laughs> I think maybe like drilling his foot would be the smarter choice. We'll get the underside here while we're here. Try not to let your brush fold over to the other side because our other side is just going to be red. I mean, we have a little bit of bleeding through down there, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, maybe it is, but you painting that didn't cause it. Take your time, 
slowly like easier brush in on towards those towards the line there done with the yellow and we can feel a lot better about ourselves yeah. remember there's this giant spell effect here that he glues into so a lot of this might be covered up by stuff so just do your best I flip him Why did I not do the other side yellow when I did this? I was like, I did the hard parts already. Nope, still. Oh shit, you see that shit? God damn it. Fix it. We'll fix it in post. That's not ideal. We got this whole time being pretty good. And then it just takes one, one little, one little bump. That's why it's important to pay super close attention to what you're doing. But for a second, I lost concentration. our yellow done. I'm really bummed out about the hitting the blue. So we'll get our Prussian blue is what we hit it with in the beginning and hope that we can blend it good enough. That's what we're about here is just doing it good enough. We're good. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to 
move to the Eye of Agamotto on him. Um, we're gonna do a bronze, like a brassy brass color for the, the outer of it, and then like a growing, glowing green for the inside. Um, this is like, it looks weird, like, because when I was putting this together and I put this on him, I was like, this looks like just like a piece of sprue. It has some detail in it, um, but it's definitely not as detailed as I'd like it to be. And it's really chunky too. It's like Doctor Strange's arc reactor, because <laughs> it goes deep into his chest. Okay, so now, now we hit a weird spot, because we're gonna do brown for the boots, but this is what we're holding on to him with, um, and I don't really have any other method to hold on to this motherfucker. So, this is what we have to make a decision. And I think that decision is gonna be to drill out his foot right now. Um, it's just really awkward, but it's gonna make it easier for now. Uh, so we got our little pin vise here. Just a little hand drill. And we're gonna go into this leg here. We're gonna drill and hopefully not take out too much material. Making sure that I'm only holding the feet part because I don't want to tear the, rip the paint off of the blue that we did. So let's drill. Take your time, don't go crazy. You don't have to push too hard. It'll chew it out. Okay, so now he has a little hole in his foot. And I have, everyone uses like, really thick rod when they drill stuff out. I have this really thin rod. It's two millimeter brass rod um, that we can use. Um, let me just super glue that shit in here really quick. Um, and then we'll cut it off later. So just put some super glue on the end. Pick him up. And just stick it in there. And now he is, now he's held on to. Um, definitely not a elegant solution, but that is, this is kind of what most people do for models. Um, just in general. <laughs> so we're gonna go for leather brown for his boots and his hair, um, minus the white parts of the hair. And this, uh, having the hole there too is probably gonna help me mount it to the base better too, just because of the hole situation that I showed you guys earlier about like, oh, how the hell does it really attach to the to that spell effect thing um, we're gonna use a couple different kinds of browns here because there is different like strapping but this is the furthest back layer that we're getting right now so you want to start with a darker brown Nice and painted. Don't forget the bottom here because 
Um, the glue is mostly dried, I think, and so hopefully it doesn't glue your brush together. Um, definitely have some planning beforehand and pin him to the to this thing instead of doing what I did and having the alligator clip on because um, it helps but then you run into a problem where you have to make a game time decision I think we'll just dry brush a, a different brown over the top of this. I think that'll get us kind of a good blend from this color to the other color. Definitely these are not identical boots. Alright, there's his boots. Now we'll let those dry while we get the hair. It's just really the top of the hair that we're getting because the sides are white. So let's, uh, let's go in here and be a little careful. painting faces. His, his hair is, you know what, his hair is black. I don't know what I'm thinking. Um, let's kind of wipe it. We'll use a black gray. Um, can poke him into that question mark. All right, he'll hold for now. Um, black gray, we'll get the black gray color for his hair. I was doing this and I was like, wait, that doesn't make sense. I don't think his mustache is brown. And I would be correct. Maybe I'll have three different hair colors on him. <laughs> we'll go black, brown, and white. I think the white should wrap away all the way around, but I'll just do the front part for now and then change it later if I feel that that needs to be done. been watching a lot of the boys and he looks like Homelander right now I'm like because the colors okay okay let's see if we can get his little mustache um, Easier to do this and then paint over with a white. <laughs> oh god, that looks rough. Alright. So we'll let that dry, and while that's drying, we're gonna dry brush our boots with a different brown. 
Um, so we were using leather brown first, and then now we want something a lot, a lot different of a color. Um, so we're going to take probably this tan. Yeah, we'll pick the desert yellow color that we kind of primered him with in the very beginning. Um, and just dry brush that over the boots um, as light as we can. And that should give us some good colors. Let's hope it's And then we have some variety. Um, and then we'll get our white paint, our matte white back, just so we can clean up the face now um, and get it ready for its color. So let's go. Definitely clean up the nose because it should not be on his nose. It's a little Hitler-y, but I think once we have this painted out that it won't look as bad. <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> um, so that'll be that. I think we can put some more white stripes in the hair too if we want to. It's not coming off my brush, so we don't want to. Let's pretend we don't. <laughs> um, now we're gonna do our eye. So we'll get that Escorpina green to get that really vibrant, magical green color that I use for the Skaven that I've been painting. Oops. Oh, I do have a yellow contrast paint. Maybe we'll put that over the yellow and see what that looks like. I'm just knocking over all the paints. Nice little dot of it. I think it should really be orange, question mark. But MCU dictates that it is green now because <laughs> it is a time stone in there. But IRL. I don't think it's part of any infinity thing. All right, so we're gonna take our contrast yellow and paint that over the yellow and see what happens. I think we'll be okay. I think it'll look decent. That's pretty orange, but hopefully it doesn't dry this orange. Um, and it'll kind of golden it out a little bit more. They'll definitely give us our detail though. And that's what we want. We want to show the we want to show the folds and stuff in the in the cloth. So I'll take it because that's what we need to kind of keep it pretty it's weird because it says yellow on this but this looks so orange in the pot and like kind of on here looking pretty good. Yeah, 
Let's get the keep now. Okay, that covers the yellow with the contrast paints. Uniforms all that up. And then, now the face should be dry. Uh, for us to do the Gilliman flesh uh, contrast paint. Okay. I'll get that painted onto his face, try to avoid the hair. as possible. Okay, it's not too bad. It kind of reads <laughs> from far away. Let's just smooth out a little bit more. So now he is done. I don't know about that mustache. I'll probably get rid of it. Let's just get rid of it. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna save this video. Let's see. What happens? Um, where's the white paint? Where did I put it down? There it is. Let's just take some white paint here. Clean that up completely. Get rid of it. Because it is not good. And we'll take our Gilliman flesh again. Paint it over the white. And I should probably wait for it to dry, but get the eyes a little bit better. Okay. And that gives us and that gives us Doctor Strange um, and his spell effects. Um, however, it goes on the model, it's like something like. kind of like this <laughs> it's very confusing um, but it'll go something like this and 
that's our video. See you next time.